And now, Marshall McLuhan deals with it in terms of it being a, a high... A high intensity, you understand? A hot medium. What I would give to, for a large sock as with horse manure in it. Which is essentially what do you do when you get stuck or, on a movie line with a guy like this behind you? Wait a minute, why can't it's I just give my maddening. opinion? It's a free country. He, he, he can give you. Do you have yeah. to give it so loud? I mean, aren't you ashamed to pontificate like that? And, and the funny part of it is, Marshall McLuhan, you don't know anything about Marshall McLuhan's oh, really? work. really? Really? I happen to teach a class at Columbia called TV, Media, and Culture. So I think that my insights into Mr. McLuhan well, have a great deal of validity. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, that's funny because I happen to have Mr. McLuhan right here. So, so, yeah, just let me, let me, let me, come over here a second. Oh, Tell I, heard, I heard what you were saying. You, you know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong. How you ever got to teach a course in anything is totally amazing. Boy, if life were only like this. Basic Principles. There are none. Okay, so let me start off by saying this. So the fourth wall is the imaginary wall between the subject and the audience. This break through that fourth wall is usually in most cases done by the title character, but sometimes it's done by the supporting cast members as well. That goes for you all too. Yes. So I could go through a list of films that use this technique and how they are effective. You fake a stomach cramp and when you're bent over, moaning and wailing, you lick your palms. It's a little childish and stupid, but then so is high school. Xanax to take the edge off, pot to mellow me out, cocaine to wake me back up again and morphine well, because it's awesome. My name is Wayne Campbell. I live in Aurora, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. Excellent. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. But I want to talk about a film not a lot of people talk about. She's in the fucking phone book. High Fidelity. Based on a Nick Hornsby novel, this film was released in 2000, directed by Stephen Fears and starring John Cusack. It also features Jack Black, in his preschool of rock days. Oh, no, oh, oh, is she in a coma? But I'm getting off track. Let's look at Rob's first address, which opens the movie. What well, came first? The music or the misery? People worry about kids playing with guns or watching violent videos. That some sort of culture of violence will take them over. Nobody worries about kids listening to thousands, literally thousands of songs about heartbreak, rejection, pain, misery, and loss. Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? This is a broken man, and this is a girlfriend leaving because she can't deal with him anymore. This is the catalyst that sets the whole film in motion and starts one of the key phrases in the movie. Where did I go wrong? No, not that. Good song though. Anyway, Rob treats the audience like his personal therapist, working through his past to see where he went wrong. We're just missing that couch from that Woody Allen movie. I own this store called Championship Vinyl. It's located in a neighborhood that attracts the bare minimum of window shoppers. I get by because the people who make a special effort to shop here, mostly young men, who spend all their time looking for deleted Smith singles, an original, not re-released underline, Frank Zappa albums. Rob clues us in and shows us how he got to where he is now through his past relationships. Rob goes through the relationships he has and how they've led to this point in his life where he's reevaluating everything and what does this all mean? This is great! This has got nothing to do with me! This is fate! This is destiny! It is beyond my control, beyond my fault. I love this! Time consuming, I guess, is the expression I'm looking for. I'm not making this up. This is how she talks. As if nobody ever had a conversation about having kids in the entire history of the world. She's incredible. So, anyway, are you in or out, Rob? I'm sorry? Well, you know, I don't know. I just find these long lost boyfriend calls a little unnerving. There's been a rash of them recently. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, remember Rocco? I went out with him after you. Kind of. 
called a few months ago. I think he was going through one of those what does it all mean kind of things. He wanted to see me and rehash the past, as they say. God, was I up for that? No. No. So, I don't know. Do all men go through that? I I've never heard of it before. I'm sorry, Charlie, but what does are you in or out mean? Well, it means are we friends or aren't we? Because if we are, that's great. That's great. But if we're not, I don't really want to spend time playing catch up on the phone. You know what I mean? I, I'm just really busy, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, of course. So, are you in or out, Rob? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. So, Charlie, why'd you dump me for Marco? Fuck! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Fuck! 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 What? You are. You are going through one of those what does it all mean things. Can't believe you, Rob. Yes, I am. Very much indeed so. God. Come on, answer the question. <sighs> oh, come on, Charlie. Don't hold back. You can say whatever you like. Why'd you dump me for Marco? Marco just seemed to be a bit more glamorous, you know? More sure of himself. Less hard work. A little sunnier. Sparkier. A while back, Dick Barry and I agreed that what really matters is what you like, not what you are like. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. And by this measure, I was having one of the best dates of my life. You love that show? Yes! <laughs> starring, um, starring, uh, who, who's starting the prison? Magoon! Magoon. That's Patrick right. Magoon. And then, we talk about our exes. She's dry and self-deprecating. Great sense of humor okay. about it. And I can really see why her songs are so good. I don't speak about Laura with as much depth, but it feels even to me like I'm being intimate. I express regret, I say nice things about her, and I hint at a deep ocean of melancholy just below the surface, which is all bullshit, really. I've just invented a sketch of a decent, sensitive guy because I'm in a position to invent him. And I guess all that charming nervous stuff seems to work somehow we all go through this trying to answer questions about perception and perspective why did i do that that was so stupid can i change and be who i need to be ultimately what is going to make me happy rob doesn't even know this himself he goes through this and says why what is this? What's going on? How can I change? All of it. And he comes out the other side saying, Right, this is what I need to do. I need to make something. I need to do something different. This matters. He got so used to not trying at all. Not putting himself out there and doing something. And that just led to his downfall. I can see now, I never really committed to Laura. I always had one foot out the door, and that prevented me from doing a lot of things, like thinking about my future, and I guess it made more sense to commit to nothing. Keep my options open. It's well understood. And that's suicide. By tiny, tiny increments. By the end of the film, we really know who Rob is. We know his fears, where he's coming from, and where he wants to go, all because he told us, the audience, directly. The making of a great compilation tape. Light breaking up is hard to do, and takes ages longer than it might seem. You gotta kick it off with a killer to grab attention. Then you gotta take it up a notch, but you don't wanna blow your wad, so then you gotta cool it off a notch. There are a lot of rules. Anyway, I've started to make a tape in my head for Laura. Full of stuff she'd like. Full of stuff that would make her happy. For the first time, I can sort of see how that's done. I believe when I fall in love with you, it won't be forever. 
Must never end. 